Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deo Sabaoth, plenis uccelli et terra, gloria tua, usana in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini. The Infallible Holy Book of Numbers of the Word of God The children of Israel are numbered, the Levites are designed to serve the tabernacle. 
And the Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the tabernacle of the covenant, the first day of the second month, the second year of their going out of Egypt, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel by their families, and houses, and the names of every one, as many as are of the male sex, from twenty years old and upwards, of all the men of Israel fit for war, and you shall number them by their troops, thou and Aaron. And there shall be with you the princes of the tribes, and of the houses in their kindreds, whose names are these, of Reuben, Elijah the son of Seder, of Simeon, Silamiel the son of Sarai Sadai, of Judah, Nisan the sons of Aminadab, of Issachar, Nathaniel the son of Swar, of Zabulon, Eliab the son of Helen, and of the sons of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elisama the son of Amiot, of Manasses, Gamaliel the son of Phadasher, of Benjamin, Abidon the sons of Gedeon, of Dan, Ahazer the son of Amazadai, of Aser, Phajiel the son of Okran, of Gad, Eliasoth the son of Duel, of Nephli, Ahira the sons of Anan. These are the most noble princes of the multitude by their tribes and kindreds, and the chiefs of the army of Israel, whom Moses and Aaron took with all the multitude of the common people, and assembled them on the first day of the second month, reckoning them up by the kindreds, and houses, and families, and heads, and names of every one from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they were numbered in the desert of Sinai of Reuben the eldest son of Israel, by their generations and families and houses and names of every head, all that were of the male sex, from twenty years old and upward, that were able to go forth to war. Were forty-six thousand five hundred, of the sons of Simeon by their generations and families, and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names and heads of every one, all that were of the male sex, from twenty years old and upward, that were able to go forth to war. 59,300. Of the sons of Gad, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, 45,650. Of the sons of Judah, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, were reckoned up seventy-four thousand six hundred. Of the sons of Issachar, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that could go forth to war, were reckoned up fifty-four thousand four hundred. Of the sons of Zabulon, by the generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. 57,400. Of the sons of Joseph, namely, of the sons of Ephraim, by the generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, 40,500. Moreover of the sons of Manasses, by the generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that could go forth to war, 32,200. Of the sons of Benjamin, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, 35,400. Of the sons of Dan, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, 62,700. Of the sons of Aser, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. 40 1,500. Of the sons of Nufli, by their generations and families and houses of their kindreds, were reckoned up by the names of every one from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, 53,400. These era they who were numbered by Moses and Aaron, and the twelve princes of Israel, every one by the houses of their kindreds. And the whole number of the children of Israel by their houses and families, from twenty years old and upward, that were able to go to war, were 603,550 men. But the Levites and the tribes of their families were not numbered with them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
number not the tribe of Levi, neither shalt thou put down the sum of them with the children of Israel, but appoint them over the tabernacle of the testimony, and all the vessels thereof, and whatsoever pertaineth to the ceremonies. They shall carry the tabernacle and all the furniture thereof, and they shall minister, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. When you are to go forward, the Levites shall take down the tabernacle, when you are to camp, they shall set it up. What stranger soever cometh to it, shall be slain. And the children of Israel shall camp every man by his troops and bands and army. But the Levites shall pitch their tents round about the tabernacle, lest there come indignation upon the multitude of the children of Israel, and they shall keep watch, and guard the tabernacle of the testimony. And the children of Israel did according to all things which the Lord had commanded Moses. The Order of the Tribes in Their Camp And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, All the children of Israel shall camp by their troops, ensigns, and standards, and the houses of their kindreds, round about the tabernacle of the covenant. On the east Judah shall pitch his tents by the bands of his army, and the prince of his son shall be Nisan the son of Aminadab. And the whole sum of the fighting men of his stock, were seventy-four thousand six hundred. Next unto him they of the tribe of Issachar encamped, whose prince was Methaniel, the son of Swar. And the whole number of his fighting men were fifty-four thousand four hundred. In the tribe of Zabulon the prince was Eliab the son of Helen. And all the army of fighting men of his stock, were fifty-seven thousand four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah, were a hundred and eighty-six thousand four hundred, and they by their troops shall march first. In the camp of the sons of Reuben, on the south side, the prince shall be Elijah the son of Sidr. And the whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were forty-six thousand five hundred. Beside him camped they of the tribe of Simeon, whose prince was Salamiel the son of Sarai And the whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were fifty-nine thousand three hundred. In the tribe of Gad the prince was Eliasoph the son of Duel. And the whole army of his fighting men that were numbered, were forty-five thousand six hundred and fifty. All that were reckoned up in the camp of Reuben, were a hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred and fifty, by their troops, they shall march in the second place. And the tabernacle of the testimony shall be carried by the officers of the Levites and their troops. As it shall be set up, so shall it be taken down. Every one shall march according to their places, and ranks. On the west side shall be the camp of the sons of Ephraim, whose prince was Elisama, the son of Amiad. The whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were forty thousand five hundred. And with them the tribe of the sons of Manasses, whose prince was Gamaliel the son of Phadasher, and the whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were thirty two thousand two hundred. In the tribe of the sons of Benjamin the prince was Abidon the sons of Gedeon. And the whole army of his fighting men, that were reckoned up, were thirty-five thousand four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Ephraim, were a hundred and eight thousand one hundred by their troops, they shall march in the third place. On the north side camped the sons of Dan, whose prince was Ahazer the son of Amazadai. The whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were sixty-two thousand seven hundred. Beside him they of the tribe of Asa pitched their tents, whose prince was Fejiel the son of Okran. The whole army of his fighting men, that were numbered, were forty one thousand five hundred. Of the tribe of the sons of Mephli the prince was Ahir the son of Anan. The whole army of his fighting men, were fifty three thousand four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Dan, were a hundred and fifty seven thousand six hundred and they shall march last. This is the number of the children of Israel, of their army divided according to the houses of their kindreds and their troops, six hundred and three thousand five hundred and fifty. And the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, for so the Lord had commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all things that the Lord had commanded. They camped by their troops, and marched by the families and houses of their fathers. The Levites are numbered and their offices distinguished. They are taken in the place of the firstborn of the children of Israel. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spoke to Moses in Mount Sinai. And these the names of the sons of Aaron, his firstborn Nadab, then Abu, and Eleazar, and Thamar.
these the names of the sons of Aaron the priests that were anointed, and whose hands were filled and consecrated, to do the functions of priesthood. Now Nadab and Abba died, without children, when they offered strange fire before the Lord, in the desert of Sinai, and Eleazar and Thamar performed the priestly office in the presence of Aaron their father. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi, and make them stand in the sight of Aaron the priest to minister to him, and let them watch, and observe whatsoever appertaineth to the service of the multitude before the tabernacle of the testimony, and let them keep the vessels of the tabernacle, serving in the ministry thereof. And thou shalt give the Levites for a gift, to Aaron and to his sons, to whom they are delivered by the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons over the service of priesthood. The stranger that approacheth to minister, shall be put to death. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have taken the Levites from the children of Israel, for every firstborn that openeth the womb among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. For every firstborn is mine, since I struck the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I have sanctified to myself whatsoever is firstborn in Israel both of man and beast, they are mine, I am the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai, saying, Number the sons of Levi by the houses of their fathers and their families, every male from one month and upward. Moses numbered them as the Lord had commanded. And there were found sons of Levi by their names, Gerson and Kath and Merari. The sons of Gerson, Lebni and Samai. The sons of Kath, Amram, and Jezar, Hebron and Oziel. The sons of Merari, Mohali and Musi. Of Gerson were two families, the Lebnites, and the Samiites, of which were numbered, people of the male sex from one month and upward, seven thousand five hundred. These shall pitch behind the tabernacle on the west, under their prince Eliasoph the son of Lael. And their charge shall be in the tabernacle of the covenant. The tabernacle itself and the cover thereof, the hanging that is drawn before the doors of the tabernacle of the covenant, and the curtains of the court the hanging also that is hanged in the entry of the court of the tabernacle, and whatsoever belongeth to the right of the altar, the cords of the tabernacle, and all the furniture thereof. Of the kindred of Kath come the families of the Amramites and Jezerites and Hebronites and Ozlites. These are the families of the Kathites reckoned up by their names, all of the male sex from one month and upward, 8,600, they shall have the guard of the sanctuary, and shall camp on the south side and their prince shall be of Lysophan the son of Oziel. And they shall keep the ark, and the table and the candlestick, the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary, wherewith they minister, and the veil, and all the furniture of this kind. And the prince of the princes of the Levites, Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, shall be over them that watch for the guard of the sanctuary. And of Merari are the families of the Mohalites, and Musites, reckoned up by their names, all of the male kind from one month and upward, 6,200. Their prince Suriel the sons of Abihaeel, they shall camp on the north side. Under their custody shall be the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars, and the pillars and their sockets, and all things that pertain to this kind of service, and the pillars of the court round about with their sockets, and the pins with their cords. Before the tabernacle of the covenant, that is to say on the east side, shall Moses and Aaron camp, with their sons, having the custody of the sanctuary, in the midst of the children of Israel. What stranger soever cometh unto it, shall be put to death. All the Levites, that Moses and Aaron numbered according to the precept of the Lord, by their families, of the male kind from one month and upward, were twenty-two thousand. And the Lord said to Moses, Number the firstborn of the male sex of the children of Israel, from one month and upward and thou shalt take the sum of them. And thou shalt take the Levites to me for all the firstborn of the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and their cattle for all the firstborn of the cattle of the children of Israel, Moses reckoned up, as the Lord had commanded, the firstborn of the children of Israel, and the males by their names, from one month and upward, were twenty-two thousand two hundred and seventy-three. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saving, Take the Levites for the firstborn of the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites for their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. But for the price of the two hundred and seventy-three, 
of the firstborn of the children of Israel, that exceed the number of the Levites, thou shalt take five signs for every head, according to the weight of the sanctuary. A sickle hath twenty obols. And then shalt give the money to Aaron and his sons, the price of them that are above. Moses therefore took the money of them that were above, and whom they had redeemed from the Levites, for the firstborn of the children of Israel, one thousand three hundred and sixty-five sickles, according to the weight of the sanctuary. And gave it to Aaron and his sons, according to the word that the Lord had commanded him. The age and time of the Levite service, their offices and burdens. And the Lord spoke to Moses, and Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kath from the midst of the Levites, by their houses and families. From thirty years old and upward, to fifty years old. Of all that go in to stand and to minister in the tabernacle of the covenant. This is the service of the sons of Kath. When the camp is to set forward, Aaron and his sons shall go into the tabernacle of the covenant, and the holy of holies, and shall take down the veil that hangeth before the door, and shall wrap up the ark of the testimony in it and shall cover it again with a cover of violet skins, and shall spread over it a cloth all of violet, and shall put in the bars. They shall wrap up also the table of proposition in a cloth of violet, and shall put with it the censers and little mortars, the cups and bowls to pour out the libations, the leaves shall be always on it, and they shall spread over it a cloth of scarlet, which again they shall cover with a covering of violet skins and shall put in the bars, they shall take also a cloth of violet wherewith they shall cover the candlestick with the lamps and tongues thereof and the snuffers and all the oil vessels, which are necessary for the dressing of the lamps, and over all they shall put a cover of violet skins and put in the bars. And they shall wrap up the golden altar also in a cloth of violet, and shall spread over it a cover of violet skins, and put in the bars. All the vessels wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, they shall wrap up in a cloth of violet, and shall spread over it a cover of violet skins, and put in the bars. They shall cleanse the altar also from the ashes, and shall wrap it up in a purple cloth, and shall put it with all the vessels that they use in the ministry thereof, that is to say, firepans, flesh hooks and forks, pot hooks and shovels. They shall cover all of the vessels of the altar together with a covering of violet skins, and shall put in the bars. And when Aaron and his sons have wrapped up the sanctuary and the vessels thereof at the removing of the camp, then shall the sons of Kath enter in to carry the things wrapped up, and they shall not touch the vessels of the sanctuary, lest they die. These are the burdens of the sons of Kath, in the tabernacle of the covenant. And over them shall be Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, to whose charge pertaineth the oil to dress the lamps, and the sweet incense, and the sacrifice, that is always offered and the oil of unction, and whatsoever pertaineth to the service of the tabernacle, and of all the vessels that are in the sanctuary. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Destroy not the people of Kath from the midst of the Levites, but do this to them, that they may live, and not die, by touching the holies of holies. Aaron and his sons shall go in, and they shall appoint every man his work, and shall divide the burdens that every man is to carry. Let not others by any curiosity see the things that are in the sanctuary before they be wrapped up, otherwise they shall die. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the sum of the soils of Gerson also by their houses and families and kindreds. From thirty years old and upward, unto fifty years old. Number them all that go in and minister in the tabernacle of the covenant. This is the office of the family of the Gersonites to carry the curtains of the tabernacle and the roof of the covenant, the other covering, and the violet covering over all, and the hanging that hangeth in the entry of the tabernacle of the covenant, the curtains of the court, and the veil and the entry that is before the tabernacle, all things that pertain to the altar, the cords and the vessels of the ministry, the sons of Gerson shall carry, by the commandment of Aaron and his sons, and each man shall know to what burden he must be assigned. This is the service of the family of the Gersonites in the tabernacle of the covenant, and they shall be under the hand of Thamar the son of Aaron a priest. Thou shalt reckon up the sons of Merari also by the families and houses of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, unto fifty years old, all that go into the office of their ministry, and to the service of the covenant of the testimony. These are their burdens, they shall carry the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof, the pillars and their sockets 
the pillars also of the court round about, with their sockets and pins and cords. They shall receive by account all the vessels and furniture, and so shall carry them. This is the office of the family of the Marirites, and their ministry in the tabernacle of the covenant, and they shall be under the hand of Thamar the son of Aaron the priest. So Moses and Aaron and the princes of the synagogue reckoned up the sons of Kath, by their kindreds and the houses of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, unto fifty years old, all that go into the ministry of the tabernacle of the covenant. And they were found two thousand seven hundred and fifty. This is the number of the people of Kath that go into the tabernacle of the covenant, these did Moses and Aaron number according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. The sons of Gerson also were numbered by the kindreds and houses of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, unto fifty years old, all that go into minister in the tabernacle of the covenant, and they were found two thousand six hundred and thirty. This is the people of the Gersonites, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the word of the Lord. The sons of Merari also were numbered by the kindreds and houses of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, unto fifty years old all that go in to fulfill the rites of the tabernacle of the covenant, and they were found three thousand two hundred. This is the number of the sons of Merari, whom Moses and Aaron reckoned up according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. All that were reckoned up of the Levites, and whom Moses and Aaron and the princes of Israel took by name, by the kindreds and houses of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, until fifty years old, that go into the ministry of the tabernacle and to carry the burdens, were in all eight thousand five hundred and eighty. Moses reckoned them up according to the word of the Lord, every one according to their offers and burdens, as the Lord had commanded him. The unclean are removed out of the camp, confession of sins, and satisfaction, first fruits and oblations belonging to the priests, trial of jealousy. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, that they cast out of the camp every leper, and whosoever hath an issue of seed, or is defiled by the dead, whether it be man or woman, cast ye them out of the camp, lest they defile it when I shall dwell with you. And the children of Israel did so, and they cast them forth without the camp, as the Lord had spoken to Moses. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall have committed any of all the sins that men are wont to commit, and by negligence shall have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and offended, they shall confess their sin, and restore the principle of self, and the fifth part over and above, to him against whom they have sinned. But if there be no one to receive it, they shall give it to the Lord, and it shall be the priestess, besides the ram that is offered for expiation, to be an atoning sacrifice. All the first fruits also, which the children of Israel offer, belong to the priest, and whatsoever is offered into the sanctuary by every one, and is delivered into the hands of the priest, it shall be his. Shall confess, this confession and satisfaction, ordained in the old law, was a figure of the sacrament of penance. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, the man whose wife shall have gone astray, and contemning her husband, shall have slept with another man, and her husband cannot discover it, but the adultery is secret, and cannot be proved by witnesses, because she was not found in the adultery, if the spirit of jealousy stir up the husband against his wife, who either is defiled, or is charged with false suspicion, he shall bring her to the priest, and shall offer an oblation for her, the tenth part of a measure of barley meal he shall not pour oil thereon, nor put frankincense upon it, because it is a sacrifice of jealousy, and an oblation searching out adultery. The spirit of jealousy, this ordinance was designed to clear the innocent, and to prevent jealous husbands from doing mischief to their wives, as likewise to give all a horror of adultery, by punishing it in so remarkable a manner. The priest therefore shall offer it, and set it before the Lord and he shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and he shall cast a little earth of the pavement of the tabernacle unto it. And when the woman shall stand before the Lord, he shall uncover her head, and shall, put on her hands the sacrifice of remembrance, and the oblation of jealousy, and he himself shall hold the most bitter waters, whereon he hath heaped curses with execration. And he shall adjure her, and shall say, If another man hath not slept with thee, 
and if thou be not defiled by forsaking thy husband Esped, these most bitter waters, on which I have heaped curses, shall not hurt thee. But if thou hast gone aside from thy husband, and art defiled, and hast lain with another man, these curses shall light upon thee, the Lord make thee a curse, and an example for all among his people, may he make thy thigh to rot, and may thy belly swell and burst asunder. Let the cursed waters enter into thy belly, and may thy womb swell and thy thigh rot. And the woman shall answer, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and shall wash them out with the most bitter waters, upon which he hath heaped the curses, and he shall give them her to drink. And when she hath drunk them up, the priest shall take from her hand the sacrifice of jealousy, and shall elevate it before the Lord, and shall put it upon the altar, yet so as first to take a handful of the sacrifice of that which is offered, and burn it upon the altar, and so give the most bitter waters to the woman to drink. And when she hath drunk them, if she be defiled, and having despised her husband be guilty of adultery, the malediction shall go through her, and her belly swelling, her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse, and an example to all the people. But if she be not defiled, she shall not be hurt, and shall bear children. This is the law of jealousy. If a woman hath gone aside from her husband, and be defiled, and the husband stirred up by the spirit of jealousy bring her before the Lord, and the priest do to her according to all things that are here written. The husband shall be blameless, and she shall bear her iniquity. The law of the Nazarites, the form of blessing the people. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, When a man, or woman, shall make a vow to be sanctified, and will consecrate themselves to the Lord, they shall abstain from wine, and from everything that may make a man drunk. They shall not drink vinegar of wine, or of any other drink, nor anything that is pressed out of the grape, nor shall they eat grapes either fresh or dried. All the days that they are consecrated to the Lord by vow, they shall eat nothing that cometh of the vineyard, from the raisin even to the kernel. All the time of his separation no razor shall pass over his head, until the day be fulfilled of his consecration to the Lord. He shall be holy, and shall let the hair of his head grow. All the time of his consecration he shall not go into any dead, neither shall he make himself unclean, even for his father, or for his mother, or for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation he shall be holy to the Lord. But if any man die suddenly before him, the head of his consecration shall be defiled, and he shall shave it forthwith on the same day of his purification, and again on the seventh day. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons to the priest in the entry of the covenant of the testimony. And the priest shall offer one for sin, and the other for a holocaust, and shall pray for him for that he hath sinned by the dead, and he shall sanctify his head that day, and shall consecrate to the Lord the days of his separation, offering a lamb of one year for sin, yet so that the former days be made void, because his sanctification was profaned. This is the law of consecration. When the days which he had determined by a vow shall be expired, he shall bring him to the door of the tabernacle of the covenant, and shall offer his oblation to the Lord one he lamb of a year old without blemish for a holocaust, and one all lamb of a year old without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for a victim of peace offering, a basket also of unleavened bread, tempered with oil, and wafers without leaven anointed with oil, and the libations of each. And the priest shall present them before the Lord, and shall offer both the sin offering and the holocaust. But the ram he shall immolate for a sacrifice of peace offering to the Lord, offering at the same time the basket of unleavened bread, and the libations that are due by custom. Then shall the hair of the consecration of the Nazarite, be shaved off before the door of the tabernacle of the covenant, and he shall take his hair, and lay it upon the fire, which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And shall take the boiled shoulder of the ram, and one unleavened cake out of the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and he shall deliver them into the hands of the Nazarite, after his head is shaven. And receiving them again from him, he shall elevate them in the sight of the Lord, and they being sanctified shall belong to the priest, as the breast, which was commanded to be separated, 
and the shoulder. After this the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite, when he hath vowed his oblation to the Lord in the time of his consecration, besides those things which his hand shall find, according to that which he had vowed in his mind, so shall he do for the fulfilling of his sanctification. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Aaron and his sons, Thus shall you bless the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, The Lord bless thee, and keep thee. The Lord show his face to thee, and have mercy on thee. The Lord turn his countenance to thee, and give thee peace. And they shall invoke my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The Offerings of the Princes at the Dedication of the Tabernacle God speaketh to Moses from the Propitiatory. And it came to pass in the day that Moses had finished the tabernacle, and set it up, and had anointed and sanctified it with all its vessels, the altar likewise and all the vessels thereof, the princes of Israel and the heads of the families, and every tribe, who were the rulers of them who had been numbered, offered their gifts before the Lord, six wagons covered, and twelve oxen. Two princes offered one wagon, and each one an ox, and they offered them before the tabernacle. And the Lord said to Moses, Receive them from them to serve in the ministry of the tabernacle, and thou shalt deliver them to the Levites according to the order of their ministry. Moses therefore receiving the wagons and the oxen, delivered them to the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave to the sons of Gerson, according to their necessity. The other four wagons, and eight oxen he gave to the sons of Merari, according to their offices and service, under the hand of Thamar the son of Aaron the priest. But to the sons of Kath he gave no wagons or oxen, because they serve in the sanctuary and carry their burdens upon their own shoulders. And the princes offered for the dedication of the altar on the day when it was anointed, their oblation before the altar. And the Lord said to Moses, Let each of the princes one day after another offer their gifts for the dedication of the altar. The first day Nisan the sons of Aminadab of the tribe of Judah offered his offering and his offering was a silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty sickles, a silver bowl of seventy sickles according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of ten sides of gold full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of a year old, this was the offering of Nusin the son of Aminadab. The second day Nathaniel the sons of Swar, prince of the tribe of Issachar, made his offering, a silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides, according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust and a buck goat for sin, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Nathaniel the son of Swar. The third day the prince of the sons of Zambulon, Eliab the son of Helen, offered a silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides by the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old, this is the oblation of Eliab the son of Helen. The fourth day the prince of the sons of Reuben, Elijah the son of Seder, offered a silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old, for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for victims of peace offerings two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Elijah the sons of Seder. The fifth day the prince of the sons of Simeon, Silamiel the son of Sarai Sadai, offered a silver dish weighing one hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides after the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, 
a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin. And for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Salamiel the son of Sir Isadai. The sixth day the prince of the sons of Gad, Eliasoph the son of Duel, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides by the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Iliasoph the son of Duel. The seventh day the prince of the sons of Ephraim, Elisamid the son Amiot, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of hour tempered with oil for a sacrifice a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Elisamid the son of Amiad. The eighth day the prince of the sons of Manasses, Gamaliel the son of Phadasher, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sickles, a silver bowl of seventy sickles, according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice. A little mortar of gold weighing ten sickles full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Gamaliel the son of Phadasher. The ninth day the prince of the sons of Benjamin, Abidon the sons of Gedeon, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides by the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Abidon the sons of Gedeon. The tenth day the prince of the sons of Dan, Ahizer the son of Amazadai, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides, according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin. And for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Ahazer the son of Amazadai. The eleventh day the prince of the sons of Aser, Fejiel the son of Okrin, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides, according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin, and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Fejiel the son of Okran. The twelfth day the prince of the sons of Nufli, Ahira the sons of Anan, offered a silver dish weighing a hundred and thirty sides, a silver bowl of seventy sides, according to the weight of the sanctuary, both full of flour tempered with oil for a sacrifice, a little mortar of gold weighing ten sides full of incense, an ox of the herd, and a ram, and a lamb of a year old for a holocaust, and a buck goat for sin and for sacrifices of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five buck goats, five lambs of a year old. This was the offering of Ahira the son of Anan. These were the offerings made by the princes of Israel in the dedication of the altar, in the day wherein it was consecrated. Twelve dishes of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve little mortars of gold, 
each dish weighing 130 sides of silver, and each bowl 70 sides, that is, putting all the vessels of silver together, 2,400 sides, by the weight of the sanctuary. Twelve little mortars of gold full of incense, weighing ten sides apiece, by the weight of the sanctuary, that is, in all a hundred and twenty sides of gold. Twelve oxen out of the herd for a holocaust, twelve rams, twelve lambs of a year old, and their libations, twelve buck goats for sin. And for sacrifices of peace offerings, oxen twenty-four, rams sixty, buck goats sixty, lambs of a year old sixty. These things were offered in the dedication of the altar, when it was anointed. And when Moses entered into the tabernacle of the covenant, to consult the oracle, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from the propitiatory, that was over the ark between the two cherubims, and from this place he spoke to him. The seven lamps are placed on the golden candlestick, to shine towards the loaves of proposition, the ordination of the Levites, into what age they shall serve in the tabernacle. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, and thou shalt say to him, When thou shalt place the seven lamps, let the candlestick be set up on the south side. Give orders therefore that the lamps look over against the north, towards the table of the leaves of proposition, over against that part shall they give light, towards which the candlestick looketh. And Aaron did so, and he put the lamps upon the candlestick, as the Lord had commanded Moses. Now this was the work of the candlestick, it was of beaten gold, both the shaft in the middle, and all that came out of both sides of the branches, according to the pattern which the Lord had shown to Moses, so he made the candlestick. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites out of the midst of the children of Israel, and thou shalt purify them, according to this rite, let them be sprinkled with the water of purification, and let them shave all the hairs of their flesh. And when they shall have washed their garments, and are cleansed, they shall take an ox of the herd, and for the offering thereof fine flour tempered with oil, and thou shalt take another ox of the herd for a sin offering, and thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the covenant, calling together all the multitude of the children of Israel, and when the Levites are before the Lord, the children of Israel shall put their hands upon them. Let them be sprinkled with the water of purification. This was the holy water mixed with the ashes of the red cow, numb, appointed for purifying all that were unclean. It was a figure of the blood of Christ, applied to our souls by his holy sacraments. And Aaron shall offer the Levites, as a gift in the sight of the Lord from the children of Israel, that they may serve in his ministry. The Levites also shall put their hands upon the heads of the oxen, of which thou shalt sacrifice one for sin, and the other for a holocaust to the Lord to pray for them. And thou shalt set the Levites in the sight of Aaron and of his sons, and shalt consecrate them being offered to the Lord, and shalt separate them from the midst of the children of Israel, to be mine. And afterwards they shall enter into the tabernacle of the covenant, to serve me. And thus shalt thou purify and consecrate them for an oblation of the Lord, for as a gift they were given me by the children of Israel, and in the tribe of the sons of Aser. The prince was Fejiel the son of Okran. And in the tribe of the sons of Nufli, the prince was Ahira the sons of Anan. This was the order of the camps, and marches of the children of Israel by their troops, when they set forward. And Moses said to Hobab the son of Ragal the Madianite, his kinsman, We are going towards the place which the Lord will give us, come with us, that we may do thee good, for the Lord hath promised good things to Israel. But he answered him, I will not go with thee, but I will return to my country, wherein I was born. And he said, Do not leave us, for thou knowest in what places we should encamp in the wilderness, and thou shalt be our guide. And if thou comest with us, we will give thee what is the best of the riches which the Lord shall deliver to us. So they marched from the mount of the Lord three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them, for three days providing a place for the camp. The cloud also of the Lord was over them by day when they marched. And when the ark was lifted up, Moses said, Arise, O Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee, flee from before thy face. And when it was set down, he said, Return, O Lord, to the multitude of the host of Israel. The people murmur and are punished with fire. 
God appointeth seventy ancients for assistance to Moses. They prophesy. The people have their fill of flesh, but forthwith many die of the plague. In the meantime there rose a murmuring of the people against the Lord, as it were repining at their fatigue. And when the Lord heard it he was angry. And the fire of the Lord being kindled against them, devoured them that were at the uttermost part of the camp. And when the people cried to Moses, Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire was swallowed up. And he called the name of that place, the burning, for that the fire of the Lord had been kindled against them. For a mixed multitude of people, that came up with them, burned with desire, sitting and weeping, the children of Israel also being joined with them, and said, who shall give us flesh to eat. We remember the ash that we ate in Egypt free cost, the cucumbers come into our mind, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. The burning, Hebrew, Taborah. A mixed multitude, these were people that came with them out of Egypt, who were not of the race of Israel, who, by their murmuring, drew also the children of Israel to murmur. This should teach us the danger of associating ourselves with the children of Egypt, that is, with the lovers and admirers of this wicked world. Our soul is dry, our eyes behold nothing else but manna. And now the manna was like coriander seed, of the color of delium. And the people went about, and gathering it, ground it in a mill, or beat it in a mortar, and boiled it in a pot, and made cakes thereof of the taste of bread tempered with oil. And when the dew fell in the night upon the camp, the manna also fell with it. Now Moses heard the people weeping by their families, every one at the door of his tent. And the wrath of the Lord was exceedingly enkindled, to Moses also the thing seemed insupportable. Delium, Delium, according to Pliny, c. was of the color of a man's nail, white and bright. And he said to the Lord, Why hast thou afflicted thy servant? Wherefore do I not find favor before thee? And why hast thou laid the weight of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this multitude, or begotten them, that thou shouldst say to me, Carry them in thy bosom as the nurse is wont to carry the little infant, and bear them into the land, for which thou hast sworn to their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give to so great a multitude? They weep against me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able alone to bear all this people, because it is too heavy for me. But if it seem unto thee otherwise, I beseech thee to kill me, and let me find grace in thy eyes, that I be not afflicted with so great evils. And the Lord said to Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the ancients of Israel, whom thou knowest to be ancients and masters of the people, and thou shalt bring them to the door of the tabernacle of the covenant, and shalt make them stand there with thee that I may come down and speak with thee, and I will take of thy spirit, and will give to them, that they may bear with thee the burden of the people, and thou mayest not be burthened alone. And thou shalt say to the people, Be ye sanctified. Tomorrow you shall eat flesh, for I have heard you say, Who will give us flesh to eat? It was well with us in Egypt. That the Lord may give you flesh, and you may eat, not for one day, nor two, nor five, nor ten no nor for twenty. But even for a month of days, till it come out at your nostrils, and become loathsome to you, because you have cast off the Lord, who is in the midst of you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we out of Egypt? Seventy men, this was the first institution of the council or senate, called the Sanhedrin, consisting of seventy or seventy-two senators or counselors. And Moses said, There are six hundred thousand footmen of this people, and sayest thou, I will give them flesh to eat a whole month? Shall then a multitude of sheep and oxen be killed, that it may suffice for their food? Or shall the fishes of the sea be gathered together to fill them? And the Lord answered him, Is the hand of the Lord unable? Thou shalt presently see whether my word shall come to pass or no. Moses therefore came, and told the people the words of the Lord, and assembled seventy men of the ancients of Israel and made them to stand about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud, and spoke to him, taking away of the Spirit that was in Moses, and giving to the seventy men. And when the Spirit had rested on them they prophesied, nor did they cease afterwards. Now there remained in the camp two of the men, of whom one was called Eldad, and the other Medad, upon whom the Spirit rested, for they also had been enrolled, 
but were not gone forth to the tabernacle. And when they prophesied in the camp, there ran a young man, and told Moses, saying, Eldad and Medad prophesy in the camp. Forthwith Josu the son of Nun, the minister of Moses, and chosen out of many, said, My lord Moses forbid them. But he said, Why hast thou emulation for me? O oh, that all the people might prophesy, and that the Lord would give them his spirit. And Moses returned, with the ancients of Israel, into the camp. And a wind going out from the Lord, taking quails up beyond the sea brought them and cast them into the camp for the space of one day's journey, on every side of the camp round about, and they flew in the air two cubits high above the ground. The people therefore rising up all that day, and night, and the next day, gathered together of quails, he that did least, ten cores, and they dried them round about the camp. As yet the flesh was between their teeth, neither had that kind of meat failed, when behold the wrath of the Lord being provoked against the people struck them with an exceeding great plague. And that place was called, The Graves of Lust, for there they buried the people that had lusted. And departing from the Graves of Lust, they came unto Hazaroth, and abode there. The Graves of Lust, or, the Sepulchres of Concupiscence, so called from their irregular desire of flesh. In Hebrew, Kibroth, Hatava. Mary and Aaron murmur against Moses, whom God praiseth above other prophets. Mary being struck with leprosy, Aaron confesseth his fault. Moses prayeth for her, and after seven days separation from the camp, she is restored. And Mary and Aaron spoke against Moses, because of his wife the Ethiopian, and they said, Hath the Lord spoken by Moses only? Hath he not also spoken to us in like manner? And when the Lord heard this, for Moses was a man exceeding meek above all men that dwelt upon earth, immediately he spoke to him, and to Aaron and Mary, Come out you three only to the tabernacle of the covenant. And when they were come out, the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud, and stood in the entry of the tabernacle calling to Aaron and Mary. And when they were come, Ethiopian, Sephir the wife of Moses was of Madian, which bordered upon the land of Chus or Ethiopia, where note, that the Ethiopia here spoken of is not that of Africa but that of Arabia, exceeding meek, Moses being the meekest of men, would not contend for himself, therefore, God inspired him to write here his own defense, and the Holy Spirit, whose dictate he wrote, obliged him to declare the truth, though it was so much to his own praise. He said to them, Hear my words, if there be among you a prophet of the Lord, I will appear to him in a vision, or I will speak to him in a dream. But it is not so with my servant Moses a who is most faithful in all my house, for I speak to him mouth to mouth, and plainly, and not by riddles and figures doth he see the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak ill of my servant Moses? And being angry with them he went away, the cloud also that was over the tabernacle departed, and behold Mary appeared white as snow with a leprosy. And when Aaron had looked on her, and saw her all covered with leprosy, he said to Moses, I beseech thee, my Lord, lay not upon us this sin, which we have foolishly committed, let her not be as one dead, and as an abortive that is cast forth from the mother's womb. Lo, now one half of her flesh is consumed with the leprosy. And Moses cried to the Lord, saying, O God, I beseech thee heal her. And the Lord answered him, If her father had spitten upon her face. Ought she not to have been ashamed for seven days at least? Let her be separated seven days without the camp, and afterward she shall be called again. Mary therefore was put out of the camp seven days, and the people moved not from that place until Mary was called again. The twelve spies are sent to view the land. The relation they make of it. And the people marched from Hazaroth, and pitched their tents in the desert of Pharaoh. And there the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to view the land of Chanan, which I will give to the children of Israel, one of every tribe, of their rulers. Moses did what the Lord had commanded, sending from the desert of Pharaoh, principal men, whose names are these, of the tribe of Reuben, Samuah the son of Zachar. Of the tribe of Simeon, Saphat the son of Hurl. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the sons of Jephon. Of the tribe of Issachar, Igal the sons of Joseph. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Ozi the son of Nun. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 
Falti the son of Raphu. Of the tribe of Zabulon, Jediel the son of Sodi. Of the tribe of Joseph, of the scepter of Manasses, Gadi the son of Susi. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiel the son of Jemai. Of the tribe of Aser, Stir the son of Michael. Of the tribe of Nephli, Nehabi the son of Vapsi. Of the tribe of Gad, Gel the son of Maki. These are the names of the men, whom Moses sent to view the land, and he called Ozi the son of Nun, Jasu. And Moses sent them to view the land of Chanan, and said to them, Go you up by the south side. And when you shall come to the mountains, view the land, of what sort it is, and the people that are the inhabitants thereof, whether they be strong or weak, few in number or many, the land itself, whether it be good or bad, what manner of cities, walled or without walls, the ground, fat or barren, woody or without trees. Be of good courage, and bring us of the fruits of the land. Now it was the time when the first ripe grapes are fit to be eaten. And when they were gone up, they viewed the land from the desert of Sin, unto Roab as you enter into Amath. And they went up at the south side, and came to Hebron, where were Achimon and Sisai and Tholmai the sons of Anak. For Hebron was built seven years before Tanis the city of Egypt. And going forward as far as the torrent of the cluster of grapes, they cut off a branch with its cluster of grapes, which two men carried upon a lever. They took also of the pomegranates and of the figs of that place, which was called Nahaliskal, that is to say, the torrent of the cluster of grapes, because from thence the children of Israel had carried a cluster of grapes. And they that went to spy out the land returned after forty days, having gone round all the country and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the assembly of the children of Israel to the desert of Pharaoh, which is in Cades. And speaking to them and to all the multitude, they showed them the fruits of the land, and they related and said, We came into the land to which thou shantest us, which in very deed floweth with milk and honey as may be known by these fruits, but it hath very strong inhabitants, and the cities are great and walled. We saw there the race of Anak. Amalek dwelleth in the south, the Hethite and the Jebusite and the Amrite in the mountains, but the Chananite abideth by the sea and near the streams of the Jordan. In the meantime Caleb, to still the murmuring of the people that rose against Moses, said, Let us go up and possess the land, for we shall be able to conquer it. But the others, that had been with him, said, No, we are not able to go up to this people, because they are stronger than we. And they spoke ill of the land, which they had viewed before the children of Israel, saying, The land which we have viewed, devoureth its inhabitants, the people, that we beheld, are of a tall stature. There we saw certain monsters of the sons of Anak, of the giant kind, in comparison of whom, we seemed like locusts. Spoke ill, these men, who by their misrepresentations of the land of promise, discouraged the Israelites from attempting the conquest of it, were a figure of worldlings, who, by decrying or misrepresenting true devotion, discourage Christians from seeking in earnest and acquiring so great a good, and thereby securing to themselves a happy eternity. The people murmur. God threateneth to destroy them. He is appeased by Moses, yet so as to exclude the murmurers from entering the promised land. The authors of the sedition are struck dead. The rest going to fight against the will of God are beaten. Wherefore the whole multitude crying wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, Would God that we had died in Egypt and would God we may die in this vast wilderness, and that the Lord may not bring us into this land, lest we fall by the sword, and our wives and children be led away captives. Is it not better to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us appoint a captain, and let us return into Egypt. And when Moses and Aaron heard this, they fell down flat upon the ground before the multitude of the children of Israel. But Jasu the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephon, who themselves also had viewed the land, rent their garments, and said to all the multitude of the children of Israel, The land which we have gone round is very good, if the Lord be favorable, he will bring us into it, and give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Be not rebellious against the Lord, and fear ye not the people of this land for we are able to eat them up as bread. All aid is gone from them, the Lord is with us, fear ye not. And when all the multitude cried out, and would have stoned them, 
the glory of the Lord appeared over the tabernacle of the covenant to all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people detract me? How long will they not believe me for all the signs that I have wrought before them? I will strike them therefore with pestilence, and will consume them, but the I will make a ruler over a great nation, and a mightier than this is. And Moses said to the Lord, That the Egyptians, from the midst of whom thou hast brought forth this people, and the inhabitants of this land, who have heard that thou, O Lord, art among this people, and art seen face to face, and thy cloud protecteth them, and thou goest before them in a pillar of a cloud by day, and in a pillar of fire by night, may hear that thou hast killed so great a multitude as it were one man and may say. He could not bring the people into the land for which he had sworn, therefore did he kill them in the wilderness. Let there the strength of the Lord be magnified, as thou hast sworn, saying, The Lord is patient and full of mercy, taking away iniquity and wickedness, and leaving no man clear who visitest the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Forgive, I beseech thee, the sins of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast been merciful to them from their going out of Egypt unto this place. And the Lord said, I have forgiven according to thy word. Clear, I, E, who deserves punishment, as I live, and the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. But yet all the men that have seen my majesty, and the signs that I have done in Egypt, and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now ten times, and have not obeyed my voice, shall not see the land for which I wear to their fathers, neither shall any one of them that hath detracted me behold it. My servant Caleb, who being full of another spirit hath followed me, I will bring into this land which he hath gone round, and his seed shall possess it. For the Amalesite and the Chanaanite dwell in the valleys. Tomorrow remove the camp, and return into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long doth this wicked multitude murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Say therefore to them, As I live, saith the Lord, according as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do to you. In the wilderness shall your carcasses lie. All you that were numbered from twenty years old and upward, and have murmured against me, shall not enter into the land, over which I lifted up my bend to make you dwell therein, except Caleb the son of Jephon, and Josu the son of Nun. But your children, of whom you said, that they should be a prey to the enemies, will I bring in, that they may see the land which you have despised. Your carcasses shall lie in the wilderness. Your children shall wander in the desert forty years and shall bear your fornication, until the carcasses of their fathers be consumed till the desert, according to the number of the forty days, wherein you viewed the land, year shall be counted for a day. And forty years you shall receive your iniquities, and shall know my revenge, for as I have spoken, so will I do to all this wicked multitude, that hath risen up together against me, in this wilderness shall it faint away and die. Shall bear your fornication, that is, shall bear the punishment of your disloyalty to God, which in the scripture language is here called a fornication, in a spiritual sense. Therefore all of the men, whom Moses had sent to view the land, and who at their return had made the whole multitude to murmur against him, speaking ill of the land that it was not, died and were struck in the sight of the Lord. But Josu, the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephon lived, of all them that had gone to view the land. And Moses spoke all these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned exceedingly. And behold rising up very early in the morning, they went up to the top of the mountain, and said, We are ready to go up to the place, of which the Lord hath spoken, for we have sinned. And Moses said to them, Why transgress you the word of the Lord, which shall not succeed prosperously with you? Go not up, for the Lord is not with you, lest you fall before your enemies. The Amalesite and the Chananite are before you, and by their sword you shall fall, because you would not consent to the Lord, neither will the Lord be with you. But they being blinded went up to the top of the mountain. But the ark of the testament of the Lord and Moses departed not from the camp. And the Amalesite came down, and the Chananite that dwelt in the mountain, and smiting and slain them pursued them as far as Hormah. Certain Laws Concerning Sacrifices Sabbath breaking is punished with death. 
the law of fringes on their garments. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and thou shalt say to them, When you shall be come into the land of your habitation, which I will give you, and shall make an offering to the Lord, for a holocaust, or a victim, paying your vows, or voluntarily offering gifts, or in your solemnities burning a sweet savour unto the Lord, of oxen or of sheep, whosoever mulleteth the victim, shall offer a sacrifice of fine flour, the tenth part of anaphy, tempered with the fourth part of a hin of oil, and he shall give the same measure of wine to pour out in libations for the holocaust or for the victim. For every lamb. And for every ram there shall be a sacrifice of hour of two tenths, which shall be tempered with the third part of a hin of oil, and he shall offer the third part of the same measure of wine for the libation, for a sweet savour to the Lord. But when thou offerest a holocaust or sacrifice of oxen, to fulfill thy vow or for victims of peace offerings, thou shalt give for every ox three tenths of flour tempered with half a hin of oil, and wine for libations of the same measure, for an offering of most sweet savour to the Lord. Thus shalt thou do, for every ox and ram and lamb and kid. Both they that are born in the land, and the strangers, shall offer sacrifices after the same rite. There shall be all one law and judgment both for you and for them who are strangers in the land. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, When you are come into the land which I will give you, and shall eat of the bread of that country, you shall separate first fruits to the Lord, of the things you eat. As you separate first fruits of your barn floors, so also shall you give first fruits of your dough to the Lord. And if through ignorance you omit any of these things, which the Lord hath spoken to Moses, and by him hath commanded you, from the day that he began to command and thenceforward, and the multitude have forgotten to do it, they shall offer a calf out of the herd, a holocaust for a most sweet savour to the Lord, and the sacrifice and libations thereof, as the ceremonies require, and a buck goat for sin, and the priest shall pray for all the multitude of the children of Israel and it shall be forgiven them, because they sinned ignorantly, offering notwithstanding a burnt offering to the Lord for themselves and for their sin and their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the people of the children of Israel, and the strangers that sojourn among them, because it is the fault of all the people through ignorance. But if one soul shall sin ignorantly, he shall offer a she-goat of a year old for his sin. And the priest shall pray for him, because he sinned ignorantly before the Lord and he shall obtain his pardon, and it shall be forgiven him. The same law shall be for all that sin by ignorance, whether they be natives or strangers. But the soul that committeth anything through pride, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, because he hath been rebellious against the Lord, shall be cut off from among his people. For he hath contemned the word the Lord, and made void his precept, therefore shall he be destroyed, and shall bear his iniquity. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, and had found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day, that they brought him to Moses and Aaron and the whole multitude. And they put him into prison, not knowing what they should do with him. And the Lord said to Moses, Let that man die, let all of the multitude stone him without the camp. And when they had brought him out, they stoned him, and he died as the Lord had commanded. The Lord also said to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel, and thou shalt tell them I to make to themselves fringes in the corners of their garments, putting in them ribbons of blue, that when they shall see them, they may remember all the commandments of the Lord, and not follow their own thoughts and eyes going astray after divers things, but rather being mindful of the precepts of the Lord, may do them and be holy to their God. Fringes, the Pharisees enlarged these fringes through hypocrisy, Matt to appear more zealous than other men for the law of God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that I might be your God. The schism of Kor and his adherents, their punishment. And behold Kor the son of Isar, the son of Kath, the son of Levi, and Dathil and Abiram the sons of Eliab, and Han the son of Feleth of the children of Reuben, rose up against Moses, and with them two hundred and fifty others of the children of Israel leading men of the synagogue, and who in the time of assembly were called by name. And when they had stood up against Moses and Aaron, they said, Let it be enough for you, 
that all of the multitude consisteth of holy ones, and the Lord is among them, why lift you up yourselves above the people of the Lord? When Moses heard this, he fell flat on his face, and speaking to Kor and all the multitude, he said, In the morning the Lord will make known who belong to him, and the holy he will join to himself, and whom he shall choose, they shall approach to him, rose up, the crime of these men, which was punished in so remarkable a manner, was that of schism, and a rebellion against the authority established by God in the church, and their pretending to the priesthood without being lawfully called and sent, the same is the case of all modern sectaries. Do this therefore, take every man of you your censers, thou core, and all thy company. And putting fire in them tomorrow, put incense upon it before the Lord, and whomsoever he shall choose, the same shall be holy, you take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And he said again to Kor, Hear ye sons of Levi. Is it a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel hath spared you from all the people, and joined you to himself, that you should serve him in the service of the tabernacle, and should stand before the congregation of the people, and should minister to him? Did he therefore make thee and all thy brethren the sons of Levi to approach unto him, that you should challenge to yourselves the priesthood also? And that all thy company should stand against the Lord? For what is Aaron that you murmur against him? Then Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab. But they answered, We will not come. Is it a small matter to thee, that thou hast brought us out of a land that flowed with milk and honey, to kill us in the desert, except thou rule also like a lord over us? Thou hast brought us indeed into a land that floweth with rivers of milk and honey, and hast given us possessions of fields and vineyards, wilt thou also pull out our eyes? We will not come. Moses therefore being very angry, said to the Lord, Respect not their sacrifices, thou knowest that I have not taken of them so much as a young ass at any time, nor have injured any of them. Very angry, this anger was a zeal against sin, and an indignation at the affront offered to God, like that which the same holy prophet conceived upon the sight of the golden calf, x. And he said to Kor, Do thou and thy congregation stand apart before the Lord tomorrow, and Aaron apart. Take every one of you censers, and put incense upon them, offering to the Lord two hundred and fifty censers, let Aaron also hold his censer. When they had done this, Moses and Aaron standing, and had drawn up all the multitude against them to the door of the tabernacle, the glory of the Lord appeared to them all. And the Lord speaking to Moses and Aaron, said, Separate yourself from among this congregation, that I may presently destroy them. They fell flat on their face, and said, O most mighty, the God of the spirits of all flesh, for one man as sin shall thy wrath rage against all? And the Lord said to Moses, Command the whole people to separate themselves from the tents of Kor and Dathun and Abiram. And Moses arose, and went to Dathun and Abiram, and the ancients of Israel following him. He said to the multitude, Depart from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be involved in their sins. And when they were departed from their tents round about, Dathun and Abiram coming out stood in the entry of their pavilions with their wives and children, and all the people. And Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all things that you see, and that I have not forged them of my own head, if these men die the common death of men, and if they be visited with a plague, wherewith others also are wont to be visited, the Lord did not send me. But if the Lord do a new thing, and the earth opening her mouth swallow them down, and all things that belong to them, and they go down alive into hell, you shall know that they have blasphemed the Lord. And immediately as he had made an end of speaking, the earth broke asunder under their feet, and opening her mouth, devoured them with their tents and all their substance. And they went down alive into hell the ground closing upon them, and they perished from among the people. But all Israel, that was standing round about, fled at the cry of them that were perishing, saying, Lest perhaps the earth swallow us up also. And a fire coming out from the Lord destroyed the two hundred and fifty men that offered the incense. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest to take up the censers that lie in the burning, and to scatter the fire of one side and the other, because they are sanctified in the deaths of the sinners, and let him beat them into plates, and fasten them to the altar, 
because incense hath been offered in them to the Lord, and they are sanctified, that the children of Israel may see them for a sign and a memorial. Then Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, wherein they had offered, whom the burning fire had devoured, and beat them into plates, fastening them to the altar, that the children of Israel might have for the time to come wherewith they should be admonished, that no stranger or any one that is not of seed of Aaron should come near to offer incense to the Lord, lest he should suffer as Kor suffered, and all his congregation, according as the Lord spoke to Moses. The following day all the multitude of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, You have killed the people of the Lord. And when there rose a sedition, and the tumult increased, Moses and Aaron fled to the tabernacle of the covenant. And when they were gone into it, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And the Lord said to Moses, Get you out from the midst of this multitude, this moment will I destroy them. And as they were lying on the ground, Moses said to Aaron, Take the censer, and putting fire in it from the altar, put incense upon it, and go quickly to the people to pray for them, for already wrath is gone out from the Lord, and the plague ringeth. When Aaron had done this, and had run to the midst of the multitude which the burning fire was now destroying, he offered the incense, and standing between the dead and the living, he prayed for the people, and the plague ceased. And the number of them that were slain was fourteen thousand and seven hundred men, besides them that had perished in the sedition of Kor. And Aaron returned to Moses to the door of the tabernacle of the covenant after the destruction was over. The priesthood is confirmed to Aaron by the miracle of the blooming of his rod, which is kept for a monument in the tabernacle. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod by their kindreds. Of all the princes of the tribes, twelve rods, and write the name of every man upon his rod. And the name of Aaron shall be for the tribe of Levi, and one rod shall contain all their families and thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the covenant before the testimony, where I will speak to thee. Whomsoever of these I shall choose, his rod shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, wherewith they murmur against you. And Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and all the princes gave him rods one for every tribe, and there were twelve rods besides the rod of Aaron. And when Moses had laid them up before the Lord in the tabernacle of the testimony, he returned on the following day, and found that the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi, was budded, and that the buds swelling it had bloomed blossoms, which spreading the leaves, were formed into almonds. Moses therefore brought out all the rods from before the Lord to all the children of Israel, and they saw, and every one received their rods. And the Lord said to Moses, Carry back the rod of Aaron into the tabernacle of the testimony, that it may be kept there for a token of the rebellious children of Israel, and that their complaints may cease from me lest they die. The rod of Aaron for the house of Levi, was budded, this rod of Aaron which thus miraculously brought forth fruit, was a figure of the blessed virgin conceiving and bringing forth her son without any prejudice to her virginity. And Moses did as the Lord had commanded. And the children of Israel said to Moses, Behold we are consumed, we all perish. Whosoever approacheth to the tabernacle of the Lord, he dieth. Are we all to a man to be utterly destroyed? The charge of the priests and of the Levites, and their portion. <laughs>